Okay, we're back. We're live here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Trump Week, the story of the king of chaos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to my left, Cynthia Sinclair, and to her left, Tim Epicella. And we are going to talk about, as we do every Friday at 11 o'clock, we're going to talk about the connect, the connecting the dots for Trump. Okay, so one of the things that happened, I mean, one of the huge things that happened this week is his blatant violation of constitutional checks and balances on Monday, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. In the Rose Garden, in the famous Rose Garden speech, which was, he was just about incoherent in that speech. Where he admitted yeah. that he didn't need to do it. That's yeah, an important and, fact. <laughs> and that was really silly to do that. I mean, he pulled the rug out from his own position that way. How can you not need to do it and also have an emergency? Uh, the, the lesser point was how do you have an emergency and fly off to play golf? Right. I mean, surely in an emergency, the president is working, doing something to solve the emergency. But right. the worst part of it is that, it's a comp that it, 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 it pulls the rug out from Congress. Yes. It pulls the rug out from the Constitution. And it's blatant. Uh, the, 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 he, you know, and it, oh, the worst part of all is that this is the kind of thing that happened in the 30s. This is the Enabling Act of 1933. It is. Where Hitler somehow managed to get through the Reichstag, both houses of the Reichstag, in 1933, a bill that said he could make the laws, thereby completely terminating their legal effect. There was no Reichstag after that. Uh, and if he does this kind of thing in Congress, there is no Congress after that. Uh, by the Constitution, Congress has the power of the purse. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he has the power of the purse. What happened to the Constitution? There's no excuse for this. I, I mean, ignorance is one thing. Hubris is another thing. But what happened here was really criminal. It was a criminal violation of the Constitution. Intentional criminal. Willful. Intentional. I believe it was completely willful. And like you say, you know, with the... The Enabling Act, it's the same thing that I've been so afraid of from the beginning with this national emergency stuff. It gives him power over like 122 different laws. Um, I was trying to look it up. It's really complicated, really long piece of, um, you know, literature or whatever you want to call it to read um, and to try to figure it out when you're not a lawyer. But um, it basically is the, yeah, the next step. I don't step. think it's complicated, Cynthia. Well, it's giving I think he him all the power. The, he violated the letter and spirit of the Constitution. Absolutely. It's now, in that, that sense, yes. And, and, and with a completely bogus claim of national emergency, there is no emergency. There right. was no emergency. Um, you know, there are so many things happening in the world that he should be spending his time on. This is the last thing. People don't care, even the people in El Paso. El Paso. So what's happened in the suits that, that flowed out of that? There are 16 of them. Well, okay. 17. Yeah. 17. Yeah. Um, where I'm disappointed is, again, we, we can go down the judicial route through court challenges, be it in the 9th District or in the 5th District of um, the El Paso County. Right. We can go that route. But where, I, where I'm really disappointed is, where are the Republicans in the Senate? Yes. Where are the Republicans in the House to say, he's taking away the authority of Congress? Why are they sitting idle? Why are they silent? That's what disappoints me. Right. Um, do they not see the, the impact and the seriousness of this maneuver? And I, I, I don't have an answer. Well, you're right. And, uh, and that, that was a point made in a letter that was, uh, that was sent uh, to all the press and to a lot of officials this week by uh, a group of 200 lawyers in the country uh, emanating out of, the, out of Washington, I think. I'm one of them. I'm one of the signatories on that letter. Um, and, and, the, and the piece is, uh, what happened to the bar associations? What happened to the lawyers? What happened to the uh, American Bar Association? What happened to all the professional organizations? What happened to all the lawyers in Congress? They should clearly see what's happening. The Constitution is being torn asunder. Trump has tried other things like this in the past. He's grabbed power like this. But this is the worst one yet. And, if, you know, and the, the precedent. It's not, we don't have to worry about the Democrats doing that. You know, they, everybody says, oh, you know, if you let Trump do this, the Democrats will do it. Mm. We have to worry about Trump doing it again and again right. and again. Yes. I mean, and, and he point. gets away with it and presto. Or being successful in it, right? Up till now, he is right. getting away with it. It's right. been five days. Congress has done nothing. Yeah. Congress could make a resolution to pull the rug out from under him. Well, I thought they were on, trying to do that. 
I thought they are. Well, where well, is gonna, it? Where is they, it? What's well, they, the House will soon approve, um, as I said, it's a, a resolution. Right. Because that's, that's what's what, called that's for the remedy the in the 1976 law that uh, Congress can enact a resolution. Right. And then the Senate would also enact that resolution, and it would go to the president's desk for, you know, for most likely a, a veto. Right. But, you know. Uh, and then, of course, it would be up to the both both houses to uh, override that veto. Right. So it's, it's, the prescription is there in the 1976 law. Um, but I guess what really the so impact is for me... It's been five business days already, yeah, Tim. Nothing. I know. But it takes time to get these... You know, Congress is out of town right now, so it takes time to get them back in the town. It's, it's going to take a while. I think Nancy Pelosi mentioned it's going to be ready by Tuesday. Mm, good. Um, but what the impact that I, I, I'm struggling with is... Donald Trump was told, no, you're not getting your $5.7 billion. Explicitly, you're not getting it. You'll get one point three for border measures and security, but not for specifically the wall. So this should be an easy resolution for Congress, shouldn't it? Yes, it, it should. should. Be. That's my point. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Is it should be, should be black and white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not. Yeah. And I, I what's going on? And it, it, it upsets me, to be honest with you, right. to see... The, them sit on their thumbs and and not, you know. Well, let's take a moment and talk about why the Republicans are not, you know, trying to curtail his power, limit his power. Why they go along with him on everything, including some really cockamamie bills and confirmations. Um, why is that? What is happening with the Republicans? I think is in the beginning it was yeah. they were going to get their way. They were going to get their agenda forward, and that's all they cared about. They put party over country. And they didn't care about what was happening out in the is world. Is this really party, it's just Cynthia? Within the, or is this well, just Trump loyalty? This, well, I think it's partly Trump loyalty, but I think it's more party loyalty. I think it's, it's more intimidation. agenda loyalty. They want those conservative judges. They want this, you know, they want to overturn Roe versus Wade. That's what mm. the conservative bunch wants to do. And they see uh, the uh, possibility of that happening. Some of these happening. things are inexplicable on that basis. Well, I, I right? think it's been clear since day one. And, and that they know there's a great deal of conservatives and of that base of whether you want to call it 30% or 35%. I don't know where you want to give that percentage. But they know there's a certain substantial percentage that no matter what Trump says, it's golden for that 30 to 35 percent. Right. Now, the last thing they want to see is Donald Trump come out against them when it's time for re-election, be it in primaries or whatever. Um, and they're worried that he's going to speak out against them during their re-election campaign. And they're going to lose their job. They're going to self-interest. I'm going to lose my job. That's Therefore, I'm going have. to let the Constitution burn to the ground because I'm concerned about getting re-elected. That's number one. Yeah. Number two is um, there was a recent poll by Fox that 45 percent of all Republicans believe that Donald Trump was appointed by God anointed by God. How many? 45% of Republicans. Oh my goodness. That's a fact, you know, again, I, I'm not going to speak to the scientific gathering process of this, this particular poll, but this is on the heels of when Sarah Saunders said to uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network right. that we believe that Donald Trump was anointed and appointed by God to be the President of the United States at this time. Okay? I don't want to be pessimistic. But, but the, let me just, yeah. now let me just move that forward Please. and say, okay, so now you have this survey of Republicans think, yes, he is appointed by God. So you're now dealing with a belief system. And right. a belief system doesn't matter about rationality or it doesn't talk about the, the, the trashing right. of the Constitution. It's, it's a belief that if you're appointed by God, then whatever you say goes. Right. And I, I'm not saying that's what's happening here, but there's right. never that one thing, sense, there's though. never one thing to... Uh, a motivation. There's never one thing to a cause effect. It's usually multiple things. Especially right. in politics, especially right. in this country with so many issues <clears throat> burning us. Right. So, I mean, a question, I mean, just to digress for a moment, uh, this is all a digression, uh, <laughs> just to digress for a moment, is this correctable? Is, is this oh, going to be fixed? God, I hope so. Or are these Republicans, you know, going to stay in office, not be, uh, you know, not be thrown out of office and continue to do the same thing? We have a long way to go before we can recover our democracy. Because right, right now, in Congress, well, in the relationship with Congress and the executive, we've lost it. Right. So how do we get back? Can we get back? Can we get back? Yeah, it's it's a better question. Because yeah. I think we're, we're now stepped over that line. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think that was going to happen. And I think we've just recently crossed over that line, and particularly to the point where I've seen the Republicans not react the way they ought to have. Yeah. That's what got me. Yeah, it reminds me of a paragraph in this piece I wrote, which will play on cable on Sunday. Really good piece, too. Yeah. 
uh, it's it may be too late. It may be too late. And, For some uh, things, I think it is too late. Sadly, we may have already passed the point of no return. See how much time we waste mm -hmm. on Trump and his daily distractions mm -hmm. and how little time we have left to think together and save ourselves from what he's doing. It's not easy. As a country, we seem more and more unfocused, unable to deal with him. This makes him more powerful. There are so many distractions yeah. and fragmentation among the Democrats and the country that we can't focus on the real problem. And the real problem is Trump. Yeah. Right. Well, let's let's set aside the the inaction or the apathy of the Republican Party in the Senate and in the House. Let's go back to the judicial system. You know, one of the checks and balances of our government. And right. let's hope to God that they do their job as judges. He seems right. confident that they're going to uphold this national emergency once they get to this in the Ninth court. District. But we don't know what that or in the Supreme Court. Oh, in the Supreme Court. it will go to the Supreme Court. Right. And and really, the test, if you want to put a test at this late date to Kavanaugh, is to see how Kavanaugh votes on that. Well, because he, it's, his national emergency, Trump's national emergency, is legally indefensible. Right. And if the Supreme Court votes for it, how can you have confidence in the Supreme Court yeah. again? Right. You know, this is really well, serious. Well, it'll be interesting to see if it's the Ninth Circuit that will go to the Supreme Court, that decision, or from the Fifth Circuit, which is, again, the lawsuit recently going to be filed in the you know, El Paso, Texas. By Tribe and Gerson. Right. So now if, if it's that one, we'll see, because then that's a real indicator of, of a slanted Supreme Court uh, decision. Yeah. We'll see. So, you know, there's been indications this week. I mean, the letter from the lawyers is one. Adam Schiff's letter is another one um, that maybe, you know, there are cracks in the, in the, uh, in the Trump wall, may I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, do we have, I ask you guys this question every single week, um, do we have a, a fissure going on here? Is Trump losing his power, losing his mojo, losing his base, uh, losing his moral suasion? Uh, what, what do we see here this week? Because this week, we really should see something like that. Are we seeing it? I don't know, but I have a joke. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what do you call Trump's supporters? Walnuts. Get it? Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there's no drum. There's no snare in the background. That's okay. I mean, they can't all be good. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, you know, I, can I answer your question? Sure. I'll say, can we wait till next week, at the end of next yeah. week, to see what... What goes on with this resolution within the House of Representatives? Yeah, fair enough. It's going to pass in the House, of course. Um, right. But can we see what that resolution does in the Senate? Because that will be the telltale sign of what truly is going on. Right. And can we see what Cohn says uh, when he sits in front oh of the gosh, House Intelligence be Committee? Is it? He's sitting in two committees. Three. He'll be on Tuesday and Thursday is closed, <laughs> and the third and Wednesday is open Timing to the public. Everything. Right. And, yeah. and national TV is everything. TV. So you may have those Republicans in the Senate putting their finger in the wind to say which way is the wind blowing. Maybe uh, Cohen's comments <laughs> and testimony, the public testimony, I think on Wednesday, they may just pay attention. They go, time to shift my, shift my gears. I hope so. I hope they wake up and realize about their duty. And these days now, you know, you, you said before that, that, you know, they see uh, their jobs as more important than their duty. Well, now there's a third thing in the, in the pile, and that's risk. They right. may see their risk as more important than their jobs. What's their risk? Um, oh, I don't know, being criticized or worse, being mm -hmm. criticized for the rest of their careers. I mean, you know, uh, the way the media works now, social media, if you get caught on something, anything, you know, your They'll career is They'll fall you to the dodged. grave. Yep. And so I think that, you know, there's some of these guys have been involved in some unholy communications with the White House. Remember that Trump spends all this time talking to his friends in the Republican Party, right. trying to shore them up, keep them together. That's what he does. Right. And these communications, these statements, these manipulations, intimidations, threats, and the like, I think they're going to come out ultimately. And those, those careers are going to be ruined, not just right. because there was a primary well, against them, but because of what comes out on it. You know, I, you know, there's been many, many articles about everything Trump touches, it tarnishes. You know, we had two fine generals that worked for him. And you know, in some degree, their you know reputations have been tarnished, and everyone that came to the administration with you know to try to fulfill the mission of that agency, they've somehow been tarnished, oh, and sure. and it's no different than um, politicians that put their arm around them and support them. Sure, I mean it's all unholy, it's it's all uh, corrupt, and so we have uh, we have Cohn coming up, we have Manafort coming up somehow, and of course we have uh, your friend. Uh, 
Um, our friend. Our friend? <laughs> yeah. Who's my friend? Who's our friend? Oh, oh, oh my God, Stone! <laughs> Stone <laughs> coming up. It's just a nutcase. He's one of those. All these guys, I mean, Stone's sure. performance with the judge Jeez. was really amazing. I cannot believe that she didn't put him in Christ jail. Club. Wow. I'm just shocked that she didn't put him in jail. You know, I really I think she did, thought, a, 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 she did a disservice to every judge I that's agree. practicing today. A disservice by not putting him in jail yeah. for at least a week. Exactly. Even week. at least a couple of days, something. But the best more than just that you can't speak. And she will put him in jail. I hope. She's leaning over, being fair and all that. Well, I think mostly one thing that I heard was um, that made sense to me is that she's being really, you know, uh, a little careful in doing that so that he doesn't turn around and to get her thrown out. Herself, yeah, exactly. Right, right, so right. if she's too hard on him, then he can say, oh, look, she's, you know, picking on me. I need a new judge. Yeah, and yeah. so by by dialing it back and showing that she's being overly fair, okay, he can't well, so do that. One day. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, well, not a week, coming, one day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one day, okay. I Just mean, Stone, overnight, Stone's something. trial may outlast the report from Mueller. If you look at the timelines now, Everybody expects Mueller in a few weeks. Stone's trial is not going to be in a few weeks. I don't know how that works. It could be that we Stone's Stone's trial is later after the report. I'm sure Robert Mueller is going. Can you stop breaking the law so I can get my report done? Well, you know, I would. <laughs> I keep we've, having to. Well, I, I keep having to put extend Mueller, things. But we've because heard. Of that also being we've heard. Distracted, isn't he? Right. You know, all this time he spent. Right. But he wants to be right, right. and he, you know, he wants to be. And of course, the question is whether it's a tome or a few pages. And there's a speculation on it'll be just a few pages. Whether right or not Barr will even let us see it. I want to it. ask you about McCabe, because I'm sure that Mueller is listening to McCabe. In right. fact, it, it occurred to me watching uh, whoever I was watching last night that, that just maybe Mueller is talking to McCabe. Not only the book, but right. other things not in the book. Absolutely. In fact, I would say that Mueller is talking to all the guys who wrote books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> about what was going on in the White I House. I agree. But what do you think about Mueller? He is really an impressive character. I agree. I'm sorry, uh, McCabe. He's really McCabe. an impressive character. Well, the He's only very thing... Very articulate. He's been all over the media saying things that are devastating to Trump. Right. I... But, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Okay, the only thing that I was thinking about that is it seems to me that he kind of threw Rosenstein under the bus by saying stuff about him, that he was involved in it, that he was serious about wearing a wire into the White House. And then, of course, Rosenstein comes out and says, no, I didn't. He comes out and, you know. Well, Rosenstein said it was made in jest or jokingly. Right, but I mean, he denies McCabe's discussion? claims. Uh, the wire. The wire to the, the right house. That, you know, I mean, I think that really happened. I do, too. And whether it's in jest or just a schmooze, you know, yeah. or, or real serious. I mean, well, I think the kids tried get, to put it in proper context of the discussion. Right. I think they, you know, they, you know when you're brainstorming around a table um, and it's brainstorming or the what ifs, and it's not a serious, you know, point by bullet point by bullet point on an agenda, those are two different things. Right. Um, and that's what he, McCabe is saying that they did is they sat around the table just sort of trying to, you know, imagine, spitball imagine ideas and stuff. the leaders of the FBI Can you, sitting around, the, and Justice, sitting around a table <laughs> talking about relieving the president. The leaders? Right. What about the eight congressmen that were being briefed by McCabe? And, you know, he's telling them, we, we need to investigate the right. president as a possible Russian agent. Right, the gang of eight. And yet they're kind of like, okay. The gang of eight just kind of didn't do anything about it. Well, 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 they're they're doing about because they know they can't, they can't inter, you know, don't intercede in this. Right. But to be silent, and say, you know, to ask more follow-up questions, or, you know, how serious that that accusation is, uh, right. you would think there'd be more than silence. They don't look so good. But right? you know, That's he what looks I think. good. He looks good. I mean, the, the attack on his credibility and um, misrepresenting to Congress and small stuff. I, I don't, I don't take that. Mm -hmm. What, what I do take is what he was saying. To me, he's totally credible. Me Just too. like the woman who attacked uh, Kavanaugh was totally credible, right? I agree. You know, so you, you got to go on your gut, your life experience, Very and make was, decisions was, on credibility. Was there a moment right. that something McCabe said that really just you really caught your attention and knocked you off your chair? Because there was for me. Well, the, the Russian well, agent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that you know, I mean, you can imagine these guys all motivated by that possibility. They had data to suggest they had to take action. Uh, on the basis that he was a Russian agent. That, yeah. What, what, what happens here also is that you get a picture, as we have from all those books that have come out, um, that, 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 that Trump is a madman. Uh, and that's what that's what Cohn is that's supposed what Cone to calls him. Yeah. He's, 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 he's a madman. He's using the Mad King syndrome here. But <laughs> I think what McCabe said that really just was a, a cold shiver to my heart was 
that Trump said, I, you know, as far as the intelligence agencies, I don't believe you when it comes to whether or not North Korea has nukes or not, or missiles ready to go, and how they're, they're you know, whether that's possible or not. I believe Vladimir Putin. Yeah, I do too. I got and how many times did we see that play out in Helsinki? <laughs> yes. I, um, Helsinki. No, Warsaw. Where was it? Um, where you that? Well, the, the meeting, you know, I think it was Helsinki. Helsinki, Helsinki right. you were right the first you time, know, yeah. Podium to podium. And then he reversed himself saying, I do believe the agencies in their reports. Then he said, I don't believe them, and I do believe them. So that's the chilling thing for me well, that the case said story, is that how would you this. believe Russia and Vladimir Putin before you believed the CIA and the, the, you know, and FBI? And all the things that he's repeated, all those uh, Vladimir Putin um, narratives that have been, you know, not revealed to the American public except through Trump. Right. Trump knows more about what Putin is saying than anyone else. What are they doing in the telephone? So why aren't the Republicans in the Senate, in the, in the House, saying, this is really serious, they guys? They should be getting right. nervous. They should be beyond you know, nervous. But we don't, we don't see it yet. We don't see it yet. So let's talk about next week. Let's talk about what's likely to happen next week to follow up on some of this stuff. Well, he's going to be in North Korea at the same time that we've got all this other nuclear stuff going on. We've got Russia saying, if you put these um, um, intermediate um, missiles, range missiles, in anywhere in Europe, then we are going to retaliate. I have, you've got one too, I see you getting your glasses out. Go ahead. No, no. Thank you. I'm okay, well, go real go. quick. Come on. Now, remember, <laughs> people say, here, the Russian's not a bad guy anymore. We, you know, we believe Trump that Russia's someone that we want to embrace. The NRA says that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So right. here's Those. what Putin said just recently, that um, they, the tension, are, are not a reason to ratchet up confrontation to the levels of the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1960s. In any case, that's not what we want. If someone wants that, well, okay. They are welcome. I have set out today what that would mean and let them count. That means how fast it takes a missile, the new missile, from Russia to hit Washington, D.C. Within minutes. Russia is very okay, advanced. So this is basically an endorsement that we can go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. Now, what Republican in the right mind should embrace Vladimir Putin after yesterday's statement? They shouldn't. Well, well it's well, not that he's just going to Cuba now. He is already in Venezuela. He has already... Okay told, uh, uh, what's his name, Maduro, that he gets $6 billion in aid from Russia if he gets this new place. He had two. This is Cuba. The, yeah. It's, Cuba. it's, it's and, only and it's Venezuela, Cuba, but it's this, the exact crisis, same thing. We had thing. Kennedy then. And Kennedy could and did face him down. Right. He faced Khrushchev down. Um, would our government now be able to face Putin down? Of course He's not. not going so to. So if there, to the extent there was a missile crisis in anywhere in, in south of the border, okay, we would lose that game. Right. This is really bad. Yes, it is. You know, is. we're a step away from war. That's we need, to, okay, we this need is to go where... back to the Cold War and not trust <sighs> Russia. And, and the Republicans need to understand that at this point. Well, I, that's I agree. What Putin is I have for. a quote about this war thing and how dangerous this is from Putin. Russia will be forced to create and deploy new types of weapons that could be used not only against the territories where a direct threat to us comes from, but also against the territories where decision-making centers, okay, directing the use of missile systems, threatening us, are located. Guess where that is. Yeah. He said the capability of such weapons, including the time to reach those centers, will be equivalent to the threats against Russia. I will say it directly and explicitly so that no one could reproach us about anything and so that everyone could understand what we are talking about here. He said Russia will be forced to create and deploy those types of weapons which could be used not only against those regions from where we will face a direct threat, but also against those regions hosting the centers where decisions are taking on using those missile systems threatening so, us. Uh, so the world, the world is coming apart. Russia is moving into the vacuum created by, by Trump's uh, Michigas right. craziness. Um, and China also is moving into that, into that vacuum. Yes. Um, and we are no longer in charge. We are no longer participating in the world order yes, or in defending a good world order. Um, this is really not a good sign because when <sighs> this kind of fragmentation happens on a global basis, and it is happening, what do you get? You get war. Um, and I really worry about that. And the Republicans Me don't too. understand that. Right. You, know, they, you know, they may not understand the points that we are making here today, honestly. 
I mean, there's a flaw in having two senators from states that have minimal population. And that's the way the founders set it up. But it did, the country did not develop, perhaps, as the way they saw it was going to develop. Right. So we're in deep trouble unless there's a wake-up call. And uh, McConnell's not about to make a wake-up call anytime soon. And uh, Trump is still on the same, and the base is still in the same place, whether they're bigger or smaller. So next week, what happens next week? We have Cohn's testimony. Cohn's testimony, which is going to blow the lid off of everything. Well, I'm sure. we'll, we'll see. We'll see. About that. We'll I think see. it'll We've be a, more you know. of the same. I don't think there'll be yeah. any terribly shocking new revelation, but we'll see. What else? Right. Well, he's, he's limited because he can't talk about any ongoing investigation. So in that sense, whatever he says will be limited, right? What else? I mean, you know, Trump is, to the extent that Trump is attacked well, by I anybody. Think, I think the big thing is we're going to see what happens to that resolution um, from the House and the Senate to see if that goes to the president's desk uh, about the national uh, emergency. So that, against, that's going to be a big I'm development that we need to watch. Sorry, I'm a pessimist. And what about the press? You know, he's stepping up his war against the New York Times and the press. New York Times, yeah. They, they, you know, I mean, the Washington yeah, Post found 7,500 lies. 7,500? Going up at a rapid rate. No, I... 7,500. I do too, but oh my gosh, I haven't day. heard that number yet. But, and then the Oof. New York Times found, you know, all the connection points with Russia. Mm -hmm. So that it's closing in. So this, this means it's time for Trump to do another distraction. Right. So I think, I mean, I can't tell you what it'll be. Venezuela. Or Venezuela. North Korea. I think it'll be North Korea. Venezuela and I think it'll be his little peace prize oh, that so he wants. You know, but... <laughs> The point is, we, we live in a world oh, of distraction yeah. now. It's so hard, right. hard to focus. And I, I want to uh, read the last paragraph, my little piece, uh, which was the challenge to everybody to um, take action. Mm -hmm. Maybe two last pages. <laughs> no. Printed the last ben page Franklin twice. said, we can only have a republic if we're willing to keep it. Right now, there's, this republic is in greater jeopardy than it has ever been. Mm -hmm. If we don't act together to restore a constitutional government in Washington, we will all be very sorry. To keep the republic, we must all pay the price, just as they did in 1789. Freedom doesn't come free. The price is eternal vigilance against the terrible tomfoolery we are now seeing under Donald Trump. Time to stand up, and that's to everyone. Right. What were you doing when the country came apart, Daddy? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. So, closing remarks. Cynthia? <sighs> um... You know, our last show, we got some comments. So like you said, people, not everybody's going to listen to this. Um, I know for me, it's um, a bit of a risk to come out and talk about these things because some people don't agree with us. And I think we're just presenting the facts. And I think that if people can get past those emotional things and get just look at the facts. Don't look at the person. Right. Look at the okay. facts. All right. right, Tim? Um, Adam Schiff wrote a letter, an opinion letter, imploring Republicans in the Congress to take action. It's a very good letter. Very good letter. Yeah. Um, he was almost pleading, you, but if you read the words, he was pleading to the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Now's the time, as you just stated in your, your letter. Um, I second that, and I hope that Republicans do stand up and take action against this. Okay, remember what you guys predicted here? What were the issues you identified here? Because uh, our job is to connect the dots. So we have to remember what we said this week so we can discuss how it went till next week. Right, Since, hang on to our notes, right? <laughs> Cynthia Sinclair and Tim Apicella, thank you so much, you guys. Thank, thank you very you, much. Jay. Trump week. Aloha. Trump week. Aloha. <laughs>